You might think this looks like a Fractal Define XL7. And you would be correct. This is in fact a Fractal Define XL7, but it's from Puget Systems. All right, so full disclosure, this is basically a secret shopper uh, video. Okay, not really super secret. This system's not for me, but it is a Threadripper 5000 system. And someone I know said, hey, since I had trouble getting the 3000 series CPUs and I can actually buy the 5000 series CPUs, you want to take a look at the system? And I said, yes. So the launch of Threadripper 5000 has been a little weird. A lot weird if you're an enthusiast. <laughs> Puget knows how to build a system. There's actually some really interesting stuff here that I wasn't even planning to talk about. It was just gonna be, you know, stuff. But Puget has already published benchmarks for a lot of applications with the 5000 series Threadripper. In this case, this is a 32 core system. We're not crazy enough to buy a 64 core system, but it's a 32 core system. It's pretty reasonable. And the situation in the run up to the Threadripper 5000 launch was that, you know, for probably six months, Threadripper Pro 3000 was a complete runaway success. It is very rare that a company gets a product as successful and mind blowing as Threadripper 3000. But when Threadripper 1000 launched, it sort of melted everybody's brain with 16 cores and all the madness there. Yeah, there were some rough edges, but then the 2000 series Threadrippers launched, which was a little bit of an incremental improvement over the 1000 series, if you want my opinion, and then 3000 launched. And so 5000 is a little bit of an incremental improvement over the 3000 series. It's a little better. Threadripper Pro 5000 maybe will fill the gap for where 3000 was. And then there was Lenovo. Lenovo had Threadripper 3000 available for, for uh, a full quarter now, actually more than a more than a full quarter, more than a full quarter. However, the person that I was building this for did not want a platform where the CPU was locked to the motherboard. They're looking at integrators that basically use standard components and they're willing to pay a premium for it. This system as configured, this is the totally stock Puget Systems configuration that we settled on. It is a Quadro A4000 GPU. This is the 32 core Threadripper 5000 series CPU, 256 gigabytes of memory, which he's probably gonna replace with a terabyte of memory that he already has. And uh, so that's a whole other thing. And uh, a small SSD, uh, which is also probably gonna be replaced with a PCIe add-in thing that I built last year. There's a 1600 watt GPU in here, which is extreme maximum overkill, but he's got a quartet of V100s that have been modified for airflow. So yeah, doing machine learning, PhD stuff going on with this machine, uh, or will be going on with this machine. It is currently serviced by a single socket Xeon workstation from a few years ago, and this is basically what they're upgrading to. They have other 3000 series systems in their lab, but they had some trouble buying more 3000 series systems, and they didn't want to buy Lenovo, because of the Lenovo case and motherboard and the fact that the Lenovo CPU will only work in, the Lenovo Threadripper Pro CPU will only work in the Lenovo system. This has got an ASUS, completely standard, ASUS Sage Wi-Fi WRX80 motherboard. It's completely standard Fractal Define 7 XL case. Completely standard Noctua fans and tower cooling. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to build a system as competently as Puget Systems has. I'm actually really impressed with this. So the first thing is you've got transparent Lexan. So they've got, you know, the fancy laser cutter water jet, probably, actually. They've got a laser cutter water jet something. And they're cutting out pieces of Lexan here to shore up some of the pieces that are missing. And so this is a support for the tower cooler. And you might look at the fan orientation and say, that's that's incorrect, I wouldn't do that. At first, I was really skeptical of this, but Puget, when you order a system, they actually take thermal images of the system under full load for like four hours or five hours or an hour or something crazy like that. And they post it to your system as it's being built to say, here's the thermal configuration. And the thermal configuration was very good. So I studied on this for just a second longer and it was like, oh, they're bringing in cool air from the top and exhausting it out the back. And so the air from the top goes into the intake for the CPU down and then sort of around and back out the back. Surprise, it's actually pretty good. Puget knows what they're doing. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have doubted. 
This Superflower 1600 power supply, it doesn't have a long enough ATX 12 volt connection. So they have to use a terrible <laughs> ketchup and mustard uh, power supply, colored power supply things. Who cares? I mean, this is a system, it doesn't even have a tempered glass side panel. It shouldn't have a tempered glass side panel because that improves the RF noise and the RF characteristics. And it actually works well. The transparent Lexan down here is for holding the GPU. It's the configuration for the A4000. Yeah, those commercial GPUs actually have little screw holes in the back. In fact, if you look at a Founders Edition, even at like a GTX 1080, there are screw holes in the back for holding GPUs in in the shipping configuration. UPS is absolutely gonna play football with your machine. And when they do, those things are the things between a working system and a non-working system when you arrive. It's not just that the GPU is gonna pop out, it's going to physically destroy the socket for the CPU or the slot for the GPU because it's not mechanically secured. You ship enough systems, you start to learn these things, you know these things. We've also got 240 millimeter Noctua fans in the front. They've got the two five and a quarter inch bay uh, brackets installed at the top. This is a great configuration for the Define XL. If I wanted to 3D print wheels for this, it's basically good to go. I did the file on that last time. Actually did the wood grain mod on this last time so I could pop a new front on here, basically be good to go. To give you an idea of the madness that is encountered during shipping, there is a secondary Lexan reinforcement at the back here because of the torque that this support could potentially put on the case in the UPS football scenario. Another little detail that you might not consider, Puget bundles a speaker. Your motherboard has a speaker header. It doesn't have an onboard speaker. It'll beep when it's booting. Puget gives you the speaker. Another important detail on the Sage WRX80, if you're gonna be running a lot of GPUs, you need supplemental power plugged into the motherboard to provide power through the PCIe slots. Well, the Sage WRX80 has a pair of six pin PCIe power connectors at the bottom edge of the motherboard. Say that six times fast. And those are plugged in ahead of time by Puget and, and zip tied in place out of the way. It's a nice setup. Whoops. Now through this process, I actually had to call Puget uh, customer service a couple of times. One is this motherboard has onboard IPMI and I let them know ahead of time. It's like, hey, ship me the VGA header. They forgot to do that, but that's okay because they overnighted it to me and it was like A plus customer service. And again, secret shopper. It's not because it was me. It's because they're, oh yeah, you totally did tell us to do that and we forgot, oops, fixed it. It was also a little damaged in shipping and they're like, we're gonna just send you another one. And it's like, no, no, it's fine. There's a little bit of damage. It was really, really well packed, but there's a little bit of damage to the bottom of the case and the air filter. And again, they were really, really wanting me to replace the whole system, but uh, I talked to the guy this was for and I showed him and you know, this is basically just one machine in a lab of machines. And he's like, I don't care if I could start running computations on this tomorrow, I don't care. It's fine. If they're not gonna give me a hard time if I have to mail it in for warranty service, don't care. And yeah, if something like that happens to you in shipping, you probably should go ahead and replace it because you never know what other issues you'll have. Maybe the case has torqued the motherboard a little bit or there's some other, you know, weird problem that's been introduced, but it's fine. We're in good hands. Just wanted to make a note of it on Puget's file in case we ever need to mail this thing in for warranty service because I'm probably gonna have to be the one to deal with that because I'm the computer janitor. Now as for the workloads and the benchmarks and everything else that goes with this, Threadripper Pro 5000 is still not available for DIYers. If I want to build this, AMD is giving first crack at OEMs to their supplies. So Threadripper Pro will launch for DIY people at some point in the future, but for integrators like Puget Systems and others, people other than Lenovo, Threadripper Pro is available and shipping now, and there's nothing special about it. And all the benchmarks and the performance characterizations and all that have already been published. Um, there's a lot of really interesting info from Puget. I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna run my own benchmarks and do some other tests while I have the system. Hopefully I have time for that, and we'll see how that goes. The workload that this system's actually gonna run in the end is GPU accelerated bioinformatics, which is actually kind of a bleeding edge thing. Like, people are not really doing a lot to get bioinformatics stuff running on GPUs. Uh, I mean, they are, they are a little bit, but not a lot. 
And so that's going to be some of the stuff that we're going to we're going to rock on this. Uh, but that kind of thing also would work well with 64 cores, like moving from 32 cores to 64 cores. Maybe that would make a lot of sense. But this research is also going to run for a couple of years. And so the thinking is, well, maybe we can, you know, use this as a trial system and then maybe we'll get an even more expensive system. 64 core based at some point in the future i don't know but i've got a lot more content coming with this and i thought it would be fun to take a quick tour of a system like this like what's your what's your experience you know what's your expectation when you order it from somewhere like puget systems and it's like not only did they they build it really well but the customer service and the online and the communication and stuff is all really good you know in the box they asked me do i want the extra unused power supply cables they actually flagged the order and said you don't you should not be ordering a 1600 watt power supply with this configuration and i said i know but i have things that i can't buy from you that are going to go in this system so they also included a helpful manual probably should blur out my order number a wi-fi antenna and even a display port cable they're like yeah if you've got uh, hdmi good luck because that's a quadro my gpu doesn't have display port that was another thing in the system they're like okay you're not ordering a monitor just so you know there's no vga or hdmi or anything and i said ah but there is vga but uh not really i mean it's it's an a4000 it's just display port that was fun it was a fun time so it's a fun little joke between me and the service rep extra hardware box with all my cables and screws and everything else that I'll need. Exciting times. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the Threadripper 5000 offerings from Puget. Again, not sponsored. This system actually really did cost like 10 grand, just shy of 10,000 US dollars in this configuration. If I were ordering this, I probably would get it with 512 gigabytes of memory instead of 256 and probably with a lot more storage. The A4000 GPU is fine, depending on what you're doing. You may not even need the A4000 GPU. You may be able to get something cheaper. This is basically equivalent to a 3070. It's 3070-ish, but it's a different software suite. It's got unlock, unlock floating point, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm one of this level one. Let me know what you want to see run on this thing. Let's talk. Let's talk benchmarks and everything else. And we will see what we can do. All right, I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. I can't wait to build my own!